Eve, well, the market is starting the week off on a back foot after it is quite positive last week. Uh, the market has actually you know, begun on a positive note today, okay. seeing uh, it continuing to to actually show strength on the 4,000 mark, given the fact that there's been a lot of uh, foreign participation, which has actually continued to strengthen the market, with uh, figures coming out of the NEC indicating that uh, for the month of October alone, foreign invest net foreign investment was actually 2.9. And in the last 10 months, it stood at actu around 15 billion net you know, inflows. So it's clear that um, the fundamentals uh, of the market are pretty strong, uh, pulling in a lot of uh, foreign investments from the Europe, given that uh, the European markets are actually having problems. So a lot of money that could be invested are actually you know, finding their way into emerging markets, and Kenya is one of them. Also, we're seeing that um, key particular stocks of the market, you know, like um, Safaricom, EABL, KCB, BAT, continue to show strong fundamentals, which are actually bringing in a long-term sustainable foreign investors. But we're also seeing um, a resilient uh, you know, number of uh, local investors who are actually you know, showing their position and, and picking out key, key stocks to, to be able to sustain the positive perf performance of the market. So given how it started today, uh, it's mm -hmm. positive that we'll actually be looking at um, 4,300 4, by the end of the week. Well, thank you so much for that correction. So the market ended up in positive territory in today's uh, trading session. Looking at Safaricom, some rather positive results in last week's uh, trading session. What did you make of those results? And uh, did we perhaps see a further momentum on the stock today? Uh, first, I must say that Safaricom did actually an impressive job, given that um, the last six months, they actually you know they made losses, especially in terms of um, return on uh, voice calls, but given how this results were 94 percent in terms of, uh, you know, profits after tax were pretty impressive. And this is virtually because of, um, you know, the brand itself and how they've been able to position themselves in the market with uh, key, sub key products like Kempesa and also ensuring that uh, they had a lot of competition in terms of voice calls, voice tariffs, but once they changed that and be able to, you know, be able to mark their own voice tariff rates, they've been able to recover that. We've been able to see that as a brand. Safaricom has continued doing very well. And we've seen that um, for the first time in a long time, uh, the strong fundamentals of Safaricom actually impacting positively on, on the share of the market, given the fact that um, it's one of the most capitalized share in, in the market. But we're seeing that um, as, you know, with each going quarter concern, we're seeing that uh, the shares are being consolidated with a lot of foreign investment coming into it. And this is one thing that Safaricom needs to do to be able to push the, the share price back to the, its IPO price and maybe beyond that. So they've been able to do well. The M-Pesa product has actually done it well. And you've been, been able to see that um, with its increasing data business, mm -hmm. which is the next frontier for, you know, increasing, creating more revenue for it. So it's done pretty well. And I'm sure this coming quarter will actually be pretty impressive for it too. But we had a large volume moving through Safaricom, 21.65 million shares in today's trading session. What do you make of a stock like East African Portland Cement? It has been on an upward momentum over the past couple of days. Uh, we, we, we need to look at it from the fact that uh, there's a lot of demand for its products in the region, given that uh, there's a lot of infrastructure going on by you know, different investors, the government, uh, di foreign, foreign direct investment, looking at uh, infrastructure across the industry, I mean, across the region. And uh, what's been driving it up is one, uh, there's a lot of uh, key interest from foreign investors who've actually been able to recognize and identify its key strong fundamentals. And also just given the fact that um, uh, there's, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, behind the scenes kind of play. When you look at the, the reduction in interest rates, when you look at the, the, the stability of the shilling, this has also strengthened its, um, you know, it's reduced its operational costs because at the end of the day, most of them hedge against the dollar. And given the fact that the shilling has been stable, given the fact that uh, it's been able to reduce its operational costs, this becomes strong fundamentals. This in return actually improves its perception at the market, but also uh, what foreign investors are looking at it is, is the other the other reason why it's been able to do pretty well. Steve, you touched on this a little earlier, saying that uh, foreign investors have put in about 2.9 billion dollars into the Kenyan markets over the past uh, 10 months. Uh, but how long do you see this lasting? And perhaps uh, could politics change this? Actually, uh, when you look at the month of October, the net inflows were 2.9. When you look at the last 10 months, the net inflows were 15.1 billion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, this is sustainable, given the fact that um, many foreign investors who are used to investing in the Europe and the North American markets are looking at emerging markets. And Kenya is one of the top five emerging markets in Africa. Uh, it has 
a lot of uh, you know green investment opportunities and this is what they're targeting uh, it's sustainable as long as we are able to show confidence that the market and politics are independent that the market has matured to a level whereby whoever becomes the next president however we handle the next election will not be able to affect this and i think the the relevant stakeholders, the Capital Markets Authority, the NSC, the Central Bank, uh, with strong leadership have been able to ensure that uh, we learned a lot from uh, the 2007-2008 PEV issue. And I think uh, the enough mechanism in place to be able to see the market through any political turmoil to the next level, to the next presidency. So I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing this is sustainable. The only thing that can be able to reduce the capital foreign inflows into the market is probably if fundamentals of key, you know, key top stocks change and probably they'd want to divest the money into other investment options but this is a trend that I see you know at least going on into the next coming quarter well, uh, we're looking at the CBK now, uh, looking uh, to uh, cap uh, salaries of uh, bank executives. Uh, do you see bank executives agreeing to this? Uh, we're seeing the central bank is co actually coming up with, with new regulations whereby uh, pay to the top level management is actually pegged on, on, on the size of the corporations they run. You know, what you earn is equivalent to the risk that you put the firm through. And I am, um, okay, this central bank says that these are supposed to be in tandem with the international guidelines in terms of paying the, the top exec executives. Mm -hmm. Whether they, they'll agree to this or not is actually dependent on how the, the different boards of um, banks will, will perceive it. Mm -hmm. And also, what, you, what will be the future? Because at the end of the day, the guidelines will actually make it hard for the banks to be able to recruit, the, in terms to be able to, to get people will be willing to, to take the risks, to take to the next level. As an emerging market, you need a leader, you need a CEO who can actually be able to perceive the risks, who can actually be able to make a decision without really being worried whether it will succeed or not. You know, sometimes it's trial and error in, in, in a market like ours. Such guidelines will make it hard for you know any any CEO to just be able to make decisions because they'll know that if I make a decision and it doesn't work mm. out well, then my bonus will be you know my pay my bonus will be cut. So I think at the end of the day, central bank and the commercial banks are going to sit down and agree on how to be able to implement this. And given the yeah. fact that um, uh, for the last one year you've seen an increase across the board of 24 percent for most of the executives. Yeah. So this is something that central bank cannot just execute or implement on its own without actually sitting down and being able to agree with.